Greetings, everyone. My name is Brian Benz. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and today I'm going to talk to you about the top ways to deliver your code to the cloud. Specifically, we're going to cover four things. We're going to cover an introduction to DevOps. What is DevOps? We're going to talk about the people and process and products that are involved in DevOps. We're going to give you a demo, which is actually most of this presentation about DevOps in action. We're going to do a little uh, A-B testing and we're going to do a little blue-green deployments. Don't worry if you don't understand what those mean yet. I will cover them later. And uh, we're going to talk about how you can keep your investments. So I'm going to be showing you some new tools and some new things you can use to enhance your DevOps processes that you might already have in place. Um, and I'm actually going to show you at the end how you can plug those processes that you've already invested in into the new tools. We make it easy to do that. So let's start with a definition of what exactly DevOps is. DevOps, this is a great quote from a colleague of mine, Donovan Brown. DevOps is a union of people, process, and products to do enable continuous delivery of value. Uh, and I just want to highlight the people, the process, and the products, and value. Uh, those are the things that we're going to talk about in this presentation today specifically, because the people matter. Those are the people doing things. Uh, you've got the process that needs to support the people, and then you have to have the products that support the process and people. And all of those things combined have to deliver some kind of value. Otherwise, why are you investing in any kind of DevOps process in the first place? All right, so let's talk about people, process, and products. The first thing is people. Work, this works on my machine. Uh, who's supporting what? Where's my code? How can I get an update? And how, how is the timeline that we've got here uh, for this project? These are very common things you hear in your typical IT departments. Uh, whenever you're delivering something, uh, you know, works on my machine. I don't know why it's not working in production. Uh, who's supporting what? Uh, we've got this issue with a piece of code. Who's really in charge of that? Uh, where is my code? I've got some code that I just finished. Uh, where is the code that I finished? Where's the update? Where's the old version? Where's the new version? Uh, can I get an update on what the actual project is, where the status is right now, and how's the timeline? Are we actually delivering things on time? These are the kinds of things that people need to know. And in order to help support these questions and the kinds of things that people need to understand and know about a project at all times, uh, you need to have a really, really good processes that you can implement and run. Uh, and it makes it clear to everyone what they're supposed to be doing. So the four typical processes of a software development lifecycle, you've got planning, you've got developing and test, you've got monitoring and learning, uh, and of course, releasing uh, in between there. So planning, you always have to have a way of making sure whatever's been planned actually is delivered through the development and test. Make sure someone's delegated to actually be responsible for those uh, plans and then you want to make sure that the release happens reliably and securely uh, and the one thing that actually often gets overlooked is monitoring and learning uh, because if you don't have monitoring and learning how do you know that what you put uh, in the plan and did all that effort in development and actually went through and put a release out how do you know that it actually delivered what was expected uh, in, uh, back in stage one in the planning phase. So you need to have that monitor and learn so you can do that. And the best way for all of this to be done is through some sort of automated process. Now at Microsoft, we have several products that you can use for this. Uh, we've got some great tools for DevOps. Uh, for the developers, we've got GitHub, of course, uh, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Uh, great ways to to implement development, to collaborate, to do pair programming with uh, shared sessions and all kinds of things that we have a uh, pretty cool setup uh, for uh, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Uh, and then for delivery, we have Azure Pipelines, we have GitHub Extensions, and we have GitHub Actions as well. And I'm gonna demo those in a few minutes here uh, in a A-B test we're gonna go through and we're actually gonna develop something create a new feature and deploy it out to uh, production. 
On top of that, once again, something that shouldn't be overlooked is managing and securing your application. So Azure Monitor is a great way to manage the performance and reliability of your applications, make sure that they're actually delivering, that they're not literally crashing or uh, not behaving in a way that's expected. Uh, Azure Policy is a great way to enforce policies and minimum uh, security and minimum uh, compliance requirements that you might have. Azure Automation is a way to automate a lot of tedious tasks that go along with management uh, every day. And then we have the Azure Security Center where we literally spend billions of dollars to make sure that the applications running on our cloud are secure and reliable. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, how do you actually deliver things uh, with Azure. Well, we've got several components that we can talk about today. GitHub Actions are a great way to deliver um, code. Uh, obviously, most people are already aware that you can actually share code and manage code with GitHub. And then GitHub Actions are a great way to automate a lot of processing, including deployments. Uh, Azure Boards are a way to um, organize things as well. We've got Azure Pipelines, Azure Artifacts, and Azure Test Plans. Let's drill into each one of those. So GitHub Actions, that's the first thing I want to talk about, specifically GitHub in general. We've got Actions, we've got Extensions. So Actions are things that run on GitHub, on servers that we call runners. Uh, they actually execute scripts that you use to automate tasks. GitHub extensions are a little bit different. If there's a GitHub marketplace you can go to and you can find extensions that we use to actually link things together. Those are written by third parties uh, and um, you download those so you can install them uh, and you can use them in various different ways. And I'm going to show you how to use one of those extensions today. Then you can integrate with Azure and you can integrate with other clouds. Uh, we are, uh, we're all friends here. You can actually deliver things to our competitor clouds. If you're doing multi-cloud, it's great. Uh, we have integration through GitHub with a lot of those. And of course, we have integration with IDEs. Uh, we also have uh, free private repos for individuals and teams. People don't uh, know that. Actually, uh, it's quite some time ago we implemented that. So uh, private repos used to be a cost if you had a team. Uh, now you can actually have free private repos uh, for individuals and teams as well. And then we have code spaces. Code spaces is a topic unto itself, which we probably won't drill into too much here today, but it's actually a way to manage your um, your infrastructure and set up some minimum viable images that you want your your developers to work with and the developers can actually go in and use an environment on github to do their development straight from a repo and they can actually activate actions as well so azure boards is another cool thing Azure boards are um, Kanban boards, and they're just basically a way to organize and delegate tasks and manage the whole software development lifecycle as you go through it. <clears throat> Azure pipelines. Azure pipelines have actually been around for a long time before GitHub Actions, and they have a lot of features that GitHub Actions is working on implementing, but uh, they're more robust in Azure pipelines right now. So you can deploy on premise, to any cloud or hybrid. Um, there are staged environment releases. There's all kinds of conditions and tests you could use. And one of the nice things is you can integrate Azure Pipelines with Azure Artifacts, which is a package manager for managing Java and other sorts of packages. And we also have Azure Test Plans, which is a way to actually create some automated test plans. And you can have a process that actually goes from a build to a test and then if the test passes, you can either manually or automatically um, de deploy to the next stage of your process. So it's pretty cool stuff. And I'm going to show you some of that in the demo today. Speaking of demos, let's get into it. So we're going to cover um, DevOps in action. We're going to cover two different things here. We've got an application. It's a really simple one. It's written in Java. It's A-B testing. Uh, which is basically trying one feature and then implementing it as another feature. And in this case, we're going to use feature flags for that. And we're going to use Azure DevOps staging environments as well, using uh, 
Azure Application Service. We're also going to do some blue-green deployments, which is um, A-B testing is when you have one feature is some of the customers see and another feature that other customers see. Uh, blue-green deployments are where you actually deploy things out in a staged way to some of the customers and then deploy the remainder as uh, time goes on. So let's get right into those uh, demos. So I'm actually going to begin at the ending today, and I'm going to show you uh, the end result that we're going to get to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to build the app from scratch uh, through GitHub, all the way through Azure DevOps, uh, through a build and a release. And then we're going to end up actually back where we started here at this production application that I want to show you today. All right. So if I click on this link, uh, this is the production web app that we've built. You get this nice little white label error page because we're not at the main starting point. This is the app. Couldn't be more simple. Uh, it's a spring app. Um, it's a Java application that basically just has a menu, uh, but it is connected to a feature flag uh, via something we call the Azure App Config Manager. So let's go in and I'll show you the, what this actually does. So here's the application in its natural state. <clears throat> and what I have, I've got is I've got a feature flag that basically triggers a new feature that will activate when I turn on the feature flag. So let's go back to our dashboard and let's go to Feature Manager, which is our Azure App Configuration uh, service. When I click on Feature Manager, there's a couple of different options here. I'm going to turn on the beta feature so it updates a feature flag. Now, this could be any application across Azure as long as it's accessible to this application. But in this case, what I just did is I turned this on. Now I'm going to refresh it a couple of times. And you'll see, hopefully, there we go. Uh, you'll see this nice, wonderful new feature, which is uh, a picture of Bit, our developer advocate uh, mascot. And uh, the reason I want to show you just is, is just to illustrate how you actually make feature managers work. Uh, in Azure. So you have this tool called Feature Manager, which is an Azure app configuration service. And you can turn on and off the features uh, through this. So the idea here is a really simple example. The idea here would be that you have a new feature you want to try out. Uh, you can literally just turn it on by going into Feature Manager. And if the feature doesn't work out, you can just turn it off again. Uh, you can also set up Percentages. So percentages will actually control things like uh, if I go in here, you can see some JSON that actually controls this. So it says uh, half the people who go to this particular feature are going to see the old feature. Half the people are going to see the new feature. But that's the idea behind feature flags. And there's a few other configurations here, but that's not what this uh, session is all about today. Uh, this is just something we're going to be using to activate uh, what we call an A-B test. So figuring out if users want a new feature or an old feature uh, using a uh, Azure DevOps and something called deployment slots as our main configuration for this. So let's go back to the dashboard. Okay, so how do we actually get here? Well, I wanted to tell you as well that all of the um, all of the steps that I'm going to follow today are in a GitHub repo that I put together called DevOps with for um, DevOps for Java Shops, uh, and we'll put the link in the uh, show page for that. Um, but there's different steps we're going through, and today we're actually going through exercise uh, four. Um, we're going to go through exercise four and five, which is Azure DevOps for CI and CD. So continuous integration, continuous deployment uh, is where we're going to go today. Uh, and then we've got some A-B testing we're going to do as well. And the next series, uh, the next episode in this series covers DevOps with GitHub, uh, which we'll cover in a, a subsequent episode. All right. So for now, uh, let's get going with this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this repo called DevOps for Java Shops, test AB Azure DevOps. And if you want to follow along at home, all you need to do is fork this so you can fork it to your own repo and then clone it 
to your local machine as well. And actually all the steps to do that once again are in the DevOps for Java Shops repo, setting up all the apps and everything we need as targets for this are there as well. But let's get started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this uh, DevOps for Java Shops test AB Azure DevOps. This is the code that I showed you here. This is actually the code that works with this. So that's the original code in its original state without the feature flag enabled. Um, and this is what you get at the end. Uh, and that is in this repo. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to set up a brand new Azure DevOps project. We're going to set up a brand new Azure DevOps organization and project to make this work. So to do that, we need to connect this GitHub repo with Azure DevOps. And to do that, if I click here on Marketplace and I search for Azure Pipelines, So Azure Pipelines is actually a, um, an app. It's a GitHub extension as opposed to a GitHub action. So we have an Azure Pipelines action down here, and this actually connects GitHub to Azure Pipelines. But that's not what we want to do today. What we want to do uh, using an action, what we want to do is we want to use the extension uh, that Microsoft actually wrote. So the difference here real quick is Azure um, GitHub extensions are written by third parties. Uh, they can be open source or not. And basically they're a way of connecting GitHub to third party applications, services, clouds in this case. GitHub actions are scripts that are written. They are uh, run on top of these things called runners and they basically manage um, all kinds of different functionality, but they're not necessarily there for connection to something. Uh, they do CI CD fairly well, um, but there's a few things we want to do that um, GitHub Actions don't do yet. Like we want to have some manual approvals in our deployment process, and we want to have a multi stage deployment where uh, some tests are done in between stages. So you'll have a staging. And then you're going to have some A-B testing, and then you move things to production. Uh, that's something that's better handled by Azure Pipelines at this moment. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to use the Azure Pipelines extension. We're going to click there. And I've already installed it. It says here, um, uh, GitHub is already, uh, you already have purchased this app on the GitHub Marketplace. It's free, but uh, that's what it tells you. So that means that you've already downloaded it and configured it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure access to this. Uh, and I click on Azure Pipelines. Now I have to get my GitHub ID. Once I've entered my GitHub ID, it automatically takes me to this page, which let me just zoom out a little bit there. There we go. Um, which has some permissions here and a little bit of a description of what this extension does. But I'm going to explain what it does, so we'll just skip ahead. So I can choose to have this particular extension triggered by all repositories, which would be really bad. Uh, that would mean that Azure DevOps does different things depending on uh, what happens in all of my repositories. And I've got 100 repositories. I don't want that to happen. So we do it on select repositories. In this case, we want to do it on DevOps for Java Shops, test AB Azure DevOps. All right. So let's save that. What that's going to do is now we're leaving GitHub and we're actually going to enter Azure DevOps. When we go into Azure DevOps, we click on my Microsoft credentials. And it's going to take me to Azure Pipelines. Uh, so Azure Pipelines, what I want to do here, I'm, as I mentioned before, so what we're doing is we're going to integrate GitHub with Azure DevOps. Every time something happens in GitHub, we want it to trigger a Azure DevOps build and a release. But then we don't want it to release all the way out to Azure. We're going to have some manual processes to actually review and approve a deployment out to production. Uh, so let's go here and let's create a new organization. We're going to call this one dev.azure.com react day two. Okay, I'll spell that right. Reactor day two, um, and we're going to host in uh, Central US. Looks good. 
uh, do they have West US 2? They do. Okay, we'll go for West US 2 because it's a little closer to where I am. Um, and the project vis visibility, we're going to make it um, private, which means that it's just available to me. I can also make it available to anybody in my enterprise or public. Let's just make it private for now. Uh, and then we're going to do the CAPTCHA. All right, so now what it's going to do is going to take me to my DevOps organization and it's going to analyze the code that is in that repo. That's the first thing it's going to do. Oh, wait, actually, I got to authenticate a couple times, one more time, just to uh, allow my credentials on GitHub to work with Azure DevOps. This may or may not be something you see in your organization, depending on your security setup. Okay. Uh, so we select a repository in this case. So now we're in Azure DevOps. You see over on the left here, all the things I described in the slides. Um, but uh, we want now Azure DevOps is asking, okay, so get, you told GitHub what you want to do over here, but you haven't told Azure DevOps what you want to connect to yet. And what this does is actually behind the scenes uh, sets up a webhook so that anytime there is a push to this repo, it's going to trigger a pipeline which does a build and then a release pipeline which does a release so let's click on that it's going to uh, check the permissions uh, and then it's going to do some pipeline yaml so the pipeline yaml here uh, actually analyzes the application and decides what it wants to do this is just a generic it's figured out that there's a java project uh, and it's given us a few basic things with a Java project. It's going to use a Palm XML to actually do a build, but there's a couple extra things we want to do. And this is a good example of dev and ops working together. So if I go back into my, um, if I go back into my repo in GitHub, you'll see that I've been provided with an Azure pipeline that uh, I can use. And in this case, provided Azure Pipeline YAML here is the file we want uh, because it's just got a couple extra steps here. Now you might have, you know, the ops team providing these and saying, okay, this is the minimum viable uh, YAML script that we want to use for all deployments to our app services on Azure. And the reason why we give you this is because there's some minimum security things that we need to do. There's some checking we need to do and a few other things. But in reality, all this does is add a little artifact drop here that makes it easier to do the repo. So let's go back to our pipeline. And instead of using the code that Azure DevOps came with to do this, uh, we're gonna use this code. There's one more step before we actually do the run. Uh, because if you remember, we're using Feature Manager, there's a connection between this app and Feature Manager. And what this is going to do, it's actually going to build it. It's going to take something called a hosted agent on Azure, and it's going to run this, and it's going to build it. And if it can't build completely, uh, it will not allow us to do a release because we don't want wor non-working code to be released out into uh, our, our resources on Azure. So the first thing we want to do is we want to connect our Azure uh, app config application configuration service with this application. To do that, you set up a variable. So we're going to have a new variable. And let me get that variable for you. variables called app configuring connection the app configuration connection string uh, and uh, the value we're going to put in I'm not going to tell you all right and you give this value secret that means that uh, if you use a secret variable in a script you must explicitly map it as an environment variable um, yeah, for this one we won't actually, but in general you want to do that. It keeps things uh, encrypted at rest anyway, but for this, let's just save it like that. Okay, so we've got our variable in there. Now I've got our app configuration connection string, oh, and I've got it. You know what? It's good I didn't make it a secret because there is definitely, I don't know. Okay, never mind. Uh, see that equals there threw me off. I don't know why it's there, but anyway, 
uh, it's there now. So this should run. So what we want to do now is we want to uh, run this. We're going to save it and we're going to run it. And basically what it should do It's going to create a uh, hosted a pipeline, and it's going to create a hosted agent that this can actually run on in a build. Okay, so uh, it checked everything out. It looks like it's going to run, so it's actually uh, started running. And here's our run that works here. Oops. Okay. jobs down here clicked in the wrong place so what it does it's going to check this out it's going to check it out from github from the repo that we've connected it's going to run some maven this actually takes quite a while to run the maven uh and then uh it, it runs on these things called hosted agents so while it's running let me show you what that is microsoft hosted agents i did put a link to them somewhere here ms hosted agents there we go so in the docs, it describes to you what a hosted agent is. And basically, this is a virtual machine that you can use. You borrow it. It actually runs a build, and it has several different environments you can use. So Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2016, Ubuntu 2018 and 16, and Mac OS X, uh, Mojave and Catalina. These are the hosted agents you can use. If I click on Windows Server 2019, It'll drill down and it'll tell me all of the software that actually is pre-installed on this hosted agent I can use. Uh, now, if you need to add a piece of software that isn't here, as you can see, the list is pretty extensive. Um, you can actually add that through some uh, commands in your YAML file as well. But let's go back to our pipeline and see how we're doing. Okay, good. So we've checked it out. We've run the Maven package. Uh, it's published the pipeline. It's finalizing the job. And it's basically 100% one artifact produced and 100% tests passed. That's great news. Okay, so let's go back to this now. Uh, and what we can do now is we can actually create, create a release. So take note of this uh, job here, 20. 2021 uh, So this is the job we want to use. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go into releases. So this was a successful job. It ran. Uh, now we need to create a release. Remember, we created a brand new project here. So there's nothing here yet except that one build and that one artifact that's sitting there waiting. So the next thing we want to do is to release. So you create a new release. Okay. And we're going to deploy a Java app to an Azure app service. There's different templates, as you can see, that you can use. And this one we're going to call staging. So we've got an artifact and we've got staging. So let's add our artifact. Uh, there's different ways you could add artifact. You can go from Jenkins. I mentioned before about investment. Uh, you can go from uh, Azure repos, GitHub, uh, you, directly from GitHub. Uh, but in this case, we're going to go from an actual build that was in Azure DevOps pipelines. So uh, the project, there's the source build. The default version could be latest. You can also have, you can specify a release at the time of the release creation. Uh, you can do the latest from a build branch with tags uh, from a specific branch with tags, a specific version. But we're just going to go with latest because we only have one version anyway. But in the future, we want it to always pick up the latest version. So we go add. Now, if I want to do continuous deployment, I go here, enable continuous deployment. Uh, I can also do a pull request trigger instead of just a release and a successful build. It's going to be anything that comes through a pull request, but we don't want to do that right now. So this is now continuous deployment. As soon as there is a successful build of the latest version of this, so any new version of this, it's going to trigger this job. So what does the job do? Let's go into staging and let's look at what the job does. In this case, there are some staging tasks that we need to take care of. Let's click on the uh, one job and two tasks. See those little 
exclamation mark to tell us where there's a few things we need to do. Uh, and we're going to choose my subscription. And what this does is create a, a connection between Azure DevOps and an app service or other uh, things in Azure that I'm going to need for this particular uh, deployment. Okay, what's that? Once that's done, then I've got some pre-made apps that I want to use for this. Web apps for Linux. And here they are. This is the Java Shop staging server. It's an app server, and there's a startup command I want to use, which I will paste in. So Java Jar Home site. This is the actual location of the file we want to use. And that is essentially what we want to do. Now we want to drill down into this deploy war to Azure App Service. And we're actually going to call it, um, even though we say deploy war to Azure App Service, it's going to be a jar file. Okay, and the runtime stack we're going to use is Java SC11. That's the startup command. Uh, there are also some application and configuration settings we can do. Uh, I can actually set up the configuration string that we need. Remember, we need to connect to the feature manager. But in this case, we're not going to do that. We're, I've already set it up in the app, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but once that's done, then we can actually save this and deploy it. So save. OK. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a release. If I create a release here, let's make sure I did everything. <laughs> yeah, everything's done. So if I go create release here, it's just going to go to staging for now. And let's see what that looks like. So basically, it's going to get the latest version of the app. We're going to skip over learning what's new. Um, I like this new graphic interface, but there is a way to do this completely with YAML. If you like uh, that, but I like for demos to do this, and you can extract lab, uh, YAML from here when you're done. But I like to have the nice graphic layout just to give everybody a good picture of what's happening here. Okay, so while this is deploying, it's going to go through. It's going to deploy a bunch of stuff in staging. It went and got the uh, application, uh, and it's going to do a commit. It's going to do a change. It's going to use those commands that I used and deploy it out to Azure. Let's go back to our dashboard while it's running. So back to the Azure portal. And let's look at our Java Shop staging web app. Okay, so what I've done in here, if I go into configuration, this is just uh, staging.azurewebsites.net. If I go into configuration, I mentioned that you have to connect the feature flag. So in application settings, not connection strings, in application settings, you go in and you set up the app configuration connection string, just like we did with the variables to allow it to build in the Azure pipelines. Uh, you do the same thing here in the app. Now, as I showed you before in the Azure DevOps, there's a way you can actually configure this. If it changes all the time or something, you can configure this in your Azure DevOps job as well. Or, or you're deploying to new pristine web apps that might not have this configured. But this is another example of Dev and Ops working together. So it's a great example of doing that, where the Ops team will provide the app service that you need. They'll configure it the way you need it to run using the configuration and the connection string. And the, the Dev team would put together that pipeline that allows it to deploy out to this app. But everybody knows their job. Everybody knows, you know, the Ops team knows they have to set up configuration for the server. The dev team knows they have to set up the pipelines to do the builds and releases. All right, so let's go back. That's the only thing I had to configure in this particular application uh, to make this work. Let's go back to our release and see what happened. Okay, so uh, it ran on uh, release one, deployment succeeded. Uh, and I can actually look at the logs here. And I can see it deployed, that job where it says deploy war to Azure App Service. 
and here's the actual link to the application so if I click on this this is the staging app and I get that nice little white label error page because we know that that doesn't work but there it is okay so the welcome is there now we know we set up the configuration for the feature flag so I can turn on that that feature flag and it's going to turn it on here too but I want to do something a little bit different here the next thing I want to do uh, if we go back to Azure DevOps close that so we also want to put this into production so to do that let's go to our releases and let's go to edit okay so we've got our staging server here I'm going to clone this and that's going to move it uh, now I want to move it to production so instead of staging we're going to call this production okay and if I go into the one job two tasks web app for Linux I literally just choose a drop down here everything else stays the same save okay back to our pipeline so now we got staging and production but we don't want things just to fly into from staging to production so let's actually set up an approval in this case we're setting up a post deployment approval and this is one of the nice things about Azure DevOps is it's integrated with your identity management system for your application because it's part of Azure so I can my name is in there and I'm going to be uh, approving this uh, there's also some other things you can do um, I'll, I'll cover those in a minute but uh, this is a post deployment approval so the idea here is you move your artifact to staging you do some things in staging maybe you have another test server as well but uh, you want to try out a few things for unit tests maybe some integration testing here make sure everything works and then you want to move it to production but the production team wants to have control over uh, when it actually goes into production. I think that's a pretty reasonable request. So once again, you can have one person who's in charge of saying uh, it's done with staging, and then you have another person who says, okay, now it's okay to do it into production. So this could be staging on a Wednesday afternoon, and this could be a Friday night, because the people who put it in production on Friday night aren't developers, and they don't know any better. But uh, they... Um, they would put that in on on whenever they need it to go in uh, according to their schedule so the production doesn't get disrupted with a new version of this thing that goes out i save it make sure and save it okay uh so the whole save is there now i can do a create release and basically what it's going to do now is it's going to ask me to go through and uh, when it gets to here, it's going to ask me for a manual approval. It'll send it by email, and it'll also just prompt me here as well. Now, uh, we can finish there. We can go staging. We get a nice approval process to production. But I mentioned we want to do an A-B test. So an A-B test would basically allow some of the people to see the version that we have uh, and some of the people to use the older version of the site that we're building. Uh, to do that, I can clone this again. And in this time, I can change this and I can call this Canary. Uh, so Canary deployments are where you're going to try a new feature, but you can roll it back if you want to uh, versus um, A-B testing where you're going to do uh, one feature and another feature. Uh, it's kind of combining the two of them here. We can actually put this into production. If they like it, great. We'll put it into production. Uh, sorry, we'll put it into a half of the people who see this in production if they like it we're going to watch their behavior if they like it if they the feature works as intended and the behavior works as intended of the users uh, and that everybody's happy with it then we'll put it into production uh, so let's just change this to production again and to do this we're using something called a deployment slot which i will explain in a minute but to go into canary we're actually still going to go into the production web server but we're going to go to this thing called a deployment slot and deployment slot here is going to be production uh, devops for java shops let's see it's still in production 
we want to put it in canary and I'll explain all of that will be clear in a couple of minutes here so let's go in and let's look at our pipeline now everything's saved so now we have a three-stage pipeline we have staging and then we're going to do a pre-deployment approval to canary and then we've got another pre-deployment approval to production so that's pretty cool uh let's start this off let's create a release and let's see what it does so release two has been created as you can see it's queued it's waiting so while that's waiting let's explain what deployment slots are let's go back to our uh, java shop web app but in this time we're going to go into production so there's different things you can do with these things called deployment slots this is our web app deployment slots uh, in this case uh, java shop production and java production canary uh, I can actually change these. Right now, all of the traffic is going to um, the production version of this website. But if I want, I can set it up so 50% of the traffic goes to one version of the website and 50% of the traffic goes to the other version of the website. So I can use Feature Manager or turn on the feature, but it's only going to be on the staging a server and in this deployment slot it won't be in the final production server yet that means half the people will see the old site half the people will see the new site using an app service and the reason why you want to do this now I, feature manager i showed you before has a 50 50 version as well right so you could watch and see what people do with that uh, but that doesn't have a couple of things you need in this case sticky sessions so, for example, you might have a situation where somebody's coming in and looking at the Tailwind Traders website, and there are sorry, not the Tailwind Traders website, the um, the website that we've got here for this feature. They want to stay on that one version of the website for the entire visit, for their entire session. They don't want to see another version of the website when they refresh the page, uh, and that's what this uh, deployment slide does. It has sticky sessions, so it makes people go to one version of the website and they stay there versus the feature manager, which has a variable result depending on how many times you refresh the page. Okay, so we've got the Java Shop production, Java Shop Canary. Let's go here. This is what the Canary, so the URL, let me back up actually, Java Shop production. If I go to the overview here, you see this URL is javashopproduction.azurewebsites.net. Okay, that's where the actual end result of that website goes. Um, if I go to my deployment slots, behind the scenes, this one's called javashopproduction-canary.azurewebsites.net. So it's a slightly different version of the website itself. And what that does, uh, it, there's an internal router basically that's going to send 50% of the people there. I can go in and I could look, I could actually adjust this. So I could say, okay, looks like people are pretty happy with the 50%. Let's, um, let's increase this to 70%. So I can have only 30% uh, of the people doing production and then Canary. Then you can go up here and you can swap these deployment slots. So it would actually swap production with Canary. And all of a sudden you're in production. Or in this case, you want to be able to roll back using Azure DevOps so uh, you want to be able to move from there. Okay, so staging is here. This is what an approval looks like. Um, and I just say, sure, approve. So it's a nice little graphical interface here. And what it's going to do now, uh, it's going to, this is Canary, so we're moving into the production server. No user would see this in staging. So the dev team can actually approve this. But when you're moving into Canary, some of the people, 50%, are going to be able to see this in production. So you want the ops team to be able to approve this. That's why you do the pre-deployment approval. And if you notice here, you can click on defer deployment for later, which you can't do with a post-deployment approval. And that will automatically allow this to go. So, yeah. So let's go. So while that's deploying, let me just give that a second. And I will explain a little bit about some other things you can do with um, with those gates. So if I click here again, whoops, 
let's go back to the actual editing of the of the not the release hold on mouse click malfunction i'm blaming the equipment that's right anyway uh so i go to canary here i'm going to click on uh, pre-deployment conditions and we're in the edit now so there's these things called triggers and these these things called gates so triggers will allow you to do things like um, set up uh, schedules, uh, deployments, but gates are a little even more interesting here. Gates allow you to, if you enable them, um, there's several things you can do with gates to pre, um, ah, it's not showing here right now, but uh, there's several things you can do here, like uh, make an API call, uh, check for some software. So you might have, for example, Oh, there we go. So you can check Azure policy compliance. You can evoke an Azure functions. You can evoke a REST API, query Azure monitor alerts, and query work items. And the work items are in your Azure DevOps board, which I didn't cover here. It's a totally different topic. Um, but basically what this allows you to do, for example, if you have a third-party tool that checks for um, uh, compliance with uh, open source modules or software, uh, you can invoke a REST API to that tool and that tool can return a, uh, a score or a yay or nay and allow you to continue from there. I don't want to change anything right now, so let's just do that. Let's go into our release two. And you can see it, it succeeded going to Canary. And now if I want to move this to production, I can actually approve this and I can defer the deployment to later, but I'm just going to say approve. And it's actually going to go out and, and approve. Uh, it's actually going to go out and deploy that based on my approval uh, and do that. But as I mentioned before, you can also do automatic approvals through staging or Canary or any of those others as well. So that's just a quick recap of how that works. Let's go back to our DevOps release. All right. So production succeeded. I would have to set up, there we go. So it's working um, in production, but only in production. Anyway, so let's go back in for the final part of this demo. I turn on the feature manager. And <clears throat> in this case, turn on my beta string. So there you go. There you go. So that's the new feature with bits sitting there. All right, so that's the demo. Um, let's just move on. I did mention one other thing I was gonna tell you, then I'm gonna wrap up with some links. Uh, I told you you could keep your investments. So, you know, this is the software development lifecycle that I showed you earlier with plan and track, develop and test, and some releases and monitoring and learning. Uh, what we've got here is a bunch of different vendors and tools and technologies and open source communities that we work with. Uh, we have engineers at Microsoft that works with all of these, uh, Chef, uh, Jenkins, uh, Eclipse, IntelliJ, uh, Python, Node, Java, you can, you can read them here. <laughs> but um, basically the whole idea here is you can keep all these investments and we have ways in Azure DevOps and GitHub Actions to integrate with all of those tools and technologies uh, in a way that makes it seamless. So if you've already invested a ton of money in Jenkins, great. You can do builds in Jenkins and then you can pass that off to Azure DevOps and have Azure DevOps do a staged deployment and test for you. Um, and that's just one example of the kinds of things you can do. All right, so let's get going with some, uh, we talked about what is DevOps, uh, people process and products, demos, and then we uh, talked about keeping your investments. I just want to wrap up with some links here. Uh, everything DevOps at Microsoft can be found at akams slash DevOps Resource Center. And we also have uh, docs.com. If you go there, you can see quick starts and reference materials. Uh, akams slash Azure DevOps Docs gives you all the documentation that we have. I hope that was useful and uh, please do ask questions. I know we have a Q&A session at the end of this presentation and I'll be available for questions as well.